joking this is how I actually wake up in the morning there's no alarm clock I wake up each morning at 8 a.m. and the first thing I do is to go and get a huge jug of water this is a life hack that I learned many years ago in the army that completely changed my life drinking a jug of water every morning rehydrates both body and mind and gets me ready for the day I also need the water because I go on long runs each morning, so I need that extra hydration. I tend to drink about three pints of water, which is equivalent to about 48 ounces, which is absolutely insane and crazy, I know, to drink that amount of water in the space of about an hour. By 8.10 a.m., I'm back in bed reading business and investment books whilst drinking my water. I also read white papers, PhD reports on emerging financial or economic trends, and any other material that my YouTube subscribers recommend I read, so I can analyze and make videos for them. I really love that about my subscribers. They're always sending me useful information for me to add to my knowledge base and helping me to improve. Because I know that my knowledge isn't perfect and I can always improve myself. At 9am, I put my workout gear on and go for a long run each morning. I tend to run for 5 to 10 kilometers most days, and this is usually about 3 or 4 times a week. People often ask me how I get motivated to do runs like this, and honestly, the truth is that I don't have the motivation to do it. I don't just wake up with that motivation. I simply made it a habit to get up and do it anyway, even when I don't feel like it. Even if my legs are burning and aching and I feel tired or I just feel lazy that day, but I just get on with it. It's a habit for me now. As a soldier, I used to wake up at 5am every Saturday and Sunday and go to the Brecon Beacons mountain range to train for the day. I can assure you this was never an enjoyable experience. It's just something I had to do to get me to where I wanted to go in my army career. Because joining the army at 17 years old, I was always told that I would never make it. I was too small, too thin, too this, too that. And I really wanted to prove everyone wrong that I was good enough and that I could do it. And that all it took was determination and discipline. Running is really freeing for me because it allows me to just forget all the problems of the world for a little bit of time each morning. When I'm running, I can switch off my mind from all the challenges I'm having and just enjoy the wildlife and the trees and the clean air filling my lungs. Because just like you, I have problems in my life too that I have to deal with. And this is the way that I release that stress each day. Training is also important to me because I have a number of injuries that I got from the army. My right hip, knee, foot, shoulder, hand, which all of these would require surgery to correct if I don't maintain the muscle and strength in my body. 50. I don't let any of my injuries define me or stop me. I use the pain to remind me of how blessed I am because other people simply didn't come home. By 9.40 a.m. I'm back home again five minutes of stretching and cool down, then straight into the shower at 9.45. You don't need to see this part. Then a quick shave and straight down for breakfast. At 10 a.m. I make my breakfast, which is the same breakfast every day. And yes, in case you're wondering, I do have massive OCD. I eat great nuts with soya milk. That's my breakfast every single day much to my wife's annoyance. <laughs> Whilst preparing my breakfast, I check my phone and emails for the first time and quickly respond to anything urgent. Since only a handful of people have actually got my phone number and I don't really use social media nor have notifications turned on, 
there really isn't much for me to have to deal with. At 10.15, whilst eating my breakfast, I check what's going on in the financial news that I get from Google, which I've programmed to only show me the good stuff. I don't see any mainstream news media ever, unless someone tells me about it, because I don't want any of that propaganda filling my head. While scouring the financial news, I'm mainly looking out for any red flags or warning indicators which will help me not just in my own businesses, but also for my own investments and for my YouTube subscribers so I can warn them as well. I then move on to my Patreon community, which is our private community outside of YouTube where we talk all things finance, investment, housing, real estate, and anything to do with the investment community. This is where I answer any private messages or questions that people need help with. I then move on to YouTube and start with checking my stats and reply to as many comments as I can. Then I block anywhere from three to five trolls from my channel. At 11 a.m. I do some more reading, usually focusing on more business related books. I then watch YouTube videos from my favorite creators like Mike Maloney and Peter Schiff, remembering to smash that like button for them. And that's a hint for you right now in case you haven't done that yet. Uh, Yeah, go ahead. Thank you so much for hitting that like button for me. 12 p.m. is when I do one or two mentoring sessions each day. The thing I love the most about mentoring is that I meet new and fantastic people every single week who I wouldn't have met otherwise. And I can really relate to each person on a very personal level because I remember many years ago when I was in exactly the same position and just how hard it was to find someone genuine who was able to help me reach my goals. There are just so many snakes out there in this industry and I really had to learn the hard way. Mentoring and training is definitely a calling for me and has already taken me around the world visiting dozens of different countries that I would never have visited had clients not booked me. So I really feel that sense of duty and commitment to help as many people as I can in the world. If I can't help people through private mentoring, then I help them through my free YouTube training videos. 2.30 p.m. This is when I drive into my local major city where I manage a number of property companies with my business partner, Dwayne. Dwayne actually started out as a mentoring client of mine many, many years ago and impressed me so much with his success in the property housing market uh, industry with his businesses that he then became a business partner of mine and is to this day. When I bought my first rental house in 2005, I realized just how hard it was to find good, reliable management. And I vowed that one day when I'd left the army, I'd set up my own agency. Fast forward eight years and I set up the first of my agencies in 2013. By 3 p.m. I arrive and either have a number of meetings or I'll check up on a current refurbishment or development project. I might do some inspections some days and other days I'll need to deal with problems, which really is the only downside of the work. I think what I enjoy most about the real estate, the housing sector, is seeing the refurbishment process from start to finish because it's such a great feeling to see a really tired and worn out house become something quite beautiful and special afterwards. I started buying houses back in 2005 while serving in the army and I've never looked back. Also knowing that I'm providing a really high standard of living for young people that's safe, affordable and feels like a home, this is what really drives me each day. I think this will make a great ensuite bedroom for someone, even having a kitchenette in here as well. I'm not sure what's going on here with this toilet, but it's not connected up. Um, so I don't know what's going on. I need to get the plumber out to just have a look at this and make sure it's working okay. As I walked in and started moving stuff around, I noticed that this half an en suite had started being built and the hard work's been done. So this is actually the sewage. So putting a toilet there would be quite simple because we've already got this waste pipe. So that's done. The water line has also been put in. 
I think this will be a nice little ensuite bathroom for whoever takes this room. So even during the recession of 2008, when I almost lost everything, it was still an exciting time period for me. And I learned so much from that tough experience and the mistakes I made that has enabled me to prepare for the next housing crash that I think is coming. It really did carry forward with me to make me a much smarter investor today. After all of my daily meetings, I start driving home at about 5 p.m. And if I can avoid traffic, I tend to get home by about 5.30 p.m. or just after. I then go straight into work on my weekly YouTube video for about two hours. This is closed door work where no one can disturb me because it is so difficult to make these videos and I need complete concentration. Doing the weekly YouTube video takes a huge amount of time out of my schedule, but I really feel it's important and worth it to support my subscribers who I feel are like an extended family to me. At around 6.30, 7 p.m. is when my wife starts cooking our evening meal each night, which I'm extremely grateful for because I simply don't have the time to cook myself with my hectic schedule. I do also cook occasionally when I'm not super busy, and I think I'm a pretty good cook, but I tend to only really cook on the weekends for us. By 7.30 each night is when my wife and I eat our evening meal, and you'll be pleased to hear that our meal is different every night, which keeps my wife sane as she can't stand my meticulous breakfast and lunch routine, which is the same meals each day. A lot of people also ask about my wife and what she does for work. Well, my wife's name is Kristin, aka Bubble Tea Kristin, as she's known around the world, as she's a world-renowned expert in the bubble tea industry. She just started her own YouTube channel recently to showcase this expertise, after her customers got wiped out by the recent global events. Which really shows just how precarious life in general can be for all of us. After dinner is one more hour of work on my YouTube video and once or twice a week I'll go over and film in the studio. Then at 9pm I get into bed and read a little more. This is usually something light, like a personal development book or a really nice biography whilst also catching up and talking with my wife some more. By 10 p.m., this is when we tend to watch some form of entertainment each night, definitely not the TV though. And at 12 a.m., this is lights out and sleep. Ready to do it all over again the next day. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh.